Ted. Our mission, Helping Parents Heal is a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting bereaved parents. Through support and resources offered, we aspire to help individuals become shining light parents, meaning a shift from a state of emotional heaviness to one of hopefulness and greater peace of mind. Helping Parents Heal goes a step beyond other groups by allowing the open discussion of spiritual experiences and afterlife evidence in a non-dogmatic way. Helping Parents Heal affiliate groups welcome everyone, regardless of religious or non-religious background, and encourage open dialogue. Attendance at all Helping Parents Heal meetings is voluntary. All discussions that take place at affiliate-led meetings are confidential. We hope that participants will learn from and share with each other. Zoom meetings run by leadership are not confidential. These meetings typically feature guest presenters and are posted on YouTube so that affiliate members worldwide can watch and benefit. Neither type of Helping Parents Heal meeting is designed to replace traditional therapy or spiritual counseling. Helping Parents Heal offers a wide variety of speakers, allowing parents to learn about many possible ways to heal. This includes presenters covering progressive topics, such as afterlife evidence and connecting with our children who have passed. The views expressed by our guest speakers may or may not reflect the opinions of Helping Parents Heal leaders and members. So we ask that you take from their presentations, whatever may benefit you personally. Welcome everyone. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, thank you, Daniel, for being here. I'm going to quickly read a bio about Daniel because for those of you who haven't heard this bio, it's just pretty incredible. And it gives you an idea of how possible it is for each of us to become mediums. Um, in January of 2017, while out to dinner in Boston for a business trip, Daniel sat, sat next to a new co-worker and their lives would change forever. As they started to get to know each other, Daniel started getting visions, pictures, and feelings that he did not completely understand. He had had this happen before, but when it did, he would just deliver the subtle message and didn't think much of it. But this time it was different. It was more, much more intense and powerful. After about 45 minutes and many tears, they had no doubt that somehow this, his aisle mate's deceased husband was with them in spirit. The messages her husband was relaying to her were spot on, things Daniel could never have known about uh, her and her family, and confirmed that he was very much still a big part of her life, even though he had passed away. Some of his messages were funny, yet some were more serious, but they were healing to her, and that made her feel so good. The messages were of pure love for her, for her and for her children. It was awesome. Even after this, being a skeptic, Daniel did not believe that it could be possible to speak to people who have passed away. Maybe he had gotten lucky and guessed all of those things. After all, it was against everything he was ever taught. Growing up Catholic and then becoming born again Christian in high school, people did not communicate with the dead. It was strictly forbidden. Daniel was taught in his Catholic elementary school that no one, excuse me, that one could not even talk to God unless it was a, through a priest. Not only that, he thought that when we die, we go to heaven or hell, and that was it. After that night, he was on a journey to find out what this life really is all about, regardless of everything he was ever taught. This is exactly what he asks of you. Be skeptical, but be open-minded. And you can check out his new book, Why Are We Here? Um, and without further ado, please join me in welcoming Daniel John. Welcome, Daniel. <clears throat> Every time I hear that bio, it's, it always sparks new memories. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much for having me, Elizabeth. Thank you all for joining. Um, one of the things <clears throat> that I like to do to start these is to open up like a little q and I I know, Elizabeth, I think we did that last time and it worked out really well. And then whether it's the person who asked the question or someone starts coming through, it kind of opens the door a little bit. But I also find that a lot of people 
<clears throat> who are grieving the loss of a loved one have like a lot of similar questions. And I don't claim to know it all, but I, from my experiences, I do have things to share that I've learned that are commonalities across like different beliefs and cultures and things like that. So why don't we, if you're okay with it, open it up. Um, if you guys want to type in your question, I'll kind of pick one or read one and then we'll get started. That sounds perfect. So everyone, if you'd like to ask a question of Daniel John, please do so. And not specifically to your, your child, something that's general that all of us can benefit from if possible. And we will definitely, uh, let's see. So we have questions coming in, Daniel. Um, so would you like for me to pick out some and ask you? Um, I, can, I can read them and then if it's okay, okay. I'll kind sure. of pick them <clears throat> Well, that's a good one. <clears throat> so Allison asks, why would a child not come through in a session? Um, I call them sessions, people call them readings. Um, but there could be many, many, many reasons. Um, a few are timing things. It could be vibrational things, could be healing things. I have a friend who lost a son and it actually took him nine years. Uh, but I've also channeled a, 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 a child who's passed a week later. So it's all when the timing is right, and a lot of times what you have to remember is source or universe or God or whatever you want to call it, religion aside, whatever you believe in that is greater than us um, has this plan, I firmly believe, and from my experiences. And if it's meant to be, it'll happen, not only with communicating with someone through a mediumship session, but throughout life. So the more you trust and the more you're open and just be patient, it will happen when it needs to. Um, so don't overthink it and think that it's your fault or, you know, that the medium is not a good medium, it could be all all kinds of uh, possibilities. So just stay open minded and just know and trust that it'll happen when it needs to. How do you incorporate your religion, religious background with spirituality? The short answer to that is I, I was raised Catholic. Uh, I'm now a Christian. I, I follow the teachings of Jesus, but I believe in all religions. I believe anyone can believe whatever they want to believe. And we all are going to end up uh, and we all currently are. We just don't realize in a place of unconditional love. I feel like part of my role in this world is to bridge the gap between spirituality and religion, because religion, in my opinion, is as in definition wise is a group or a set of beliefs. Uh, and something of an of a higher source. And so I believe that we will all recognize whatever path we take, we will get to that understanding at some point in our evolution. Um, so it's really easy to incorporate because I think it's kind of one and the same. Um, I got two names that are coming through together and they keep throwing me a bunch of different names, uh, different numbers. I get the name um, Connor and I also get the name Jack. So you would have to resonate with both of them, not one. Um, and they're giving me a bunch of like 13, 14, like I'm, I can't get a solid number on it, but I'm getting the Connor or Colin name and it's definitely Jack. It's not just a J name. I have a symbol for Jack and it's definitely something about the Jack or Cracker Jacks or the name Jack. It's not, it's not John, it's not Jim, it's Jack. So, um, who connects with the Connor or Colin or Cody CO name and also has the J Jack connection at the same time. Uh, and oh. these teen numbers keep going like 13, 14, 16. Uh, so I don't know if it was like the middle of the month. Go ahead, sorry. I think it's um, Kathy Elizabeth. <laughs> okay, I do too. So yeah, I've asked her to on you. Kathy, can you turn on your video too? Sure, if you don't oh, mind me being in my pajamas. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. So, so I didn't read the comments. Um, how do you resonate with, with, with the two? Um, well, I have a son named Connor um, in spirit, and his brother's name is Jack. Okay. Um, very sorry for your loss. Thank you. The, the weirdest thing I, it's, they're showing me my old kitchen floor. And it's this red floral, like puffy floor. I have no idea why they're showing it to me. Do you have a red kitchen? Um, mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. Um, why would you show me the old? Oh, did, did you did you recently? Okay. I have to figure. So one of the things here tonight, I see there's a couple hundred people in here. If I can give everyone a little advice, the best way to benefit from tonight 
is to A, watch the connection happen and watch the process because you can learn a lot from the process because as Elizabeth said, I firmly believe we are all mediums. We're all able to connect to our loved ones. A medium is just someone who's halfway between two extremes, the spirit world and the human world. We're all mediums. The word psychic just means by definition that you're able to obtain information without the five senses. We are all psychic. We are all mediums. That's just my opinion. It's just definitions and words. We can all connect to someone in spirit and we can all pick up on, maybe you start singing a song and it's the next one on the radio. Anyone ever have that happen? Or you think of someone and they call you 10 minutes later and you haven't talked to them in months. Those are all psychic intuition feelings. We all have that. So when I'm tuning into the energy and I'm still want to figure out if this is for Kathy, they show me something. It's a flash of something in my mind. And it's like a game of charades. I have to figure it out. So they're showing my, me my old kitchen floor. No idea. Um, now I have to try to figure out why. Did you recently visit your old house and or did you just move from the house where the kids grew up? Um, no, but I did just recently put like literally just yesterday I put out red pillows in my living room I don't know if that would um I'm not so well it's really weird because I would say normally no but the, the my floor when I was little was very puffy and I think I might have even said in the beginning there was this floral puffy design and you could push on them now is red something you normally don't do like it's kind of like I don't usually do red but now I did I'm doing red I had put them away for a long time and um had something else out um do you not normally do red or because I think I think first like my mom's a red person. My wife is like can't stand the red. We, I think you usually have red people or like no red. Are you in are you the rare in the middle or are you one of the extremes? I'm sort of the rare in the middle. I, I, I'm kind of rare in the middle. I have a little bit of red in one room and that's it. I try to stay away from it. OK, um, and I'm assuming the pillows aren't in the kitchen. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. OK, um, that's not it. Here's, we're going to go, who's Brian or the B name? Oh. I have a brother, I have a brother named Brian. Okay. Still here. Okay, that, okay, I felt that. So what I tell a lot of people is, um, and especially when it comes to bringing through the energy of a child who's passed, we all want to connect to our loved one in spirit. I'm assuming based on the information I'm, get, I'm, I'm getting, you've been to a meeting before and your son has come through. Yes. Yeah. Okay. When that happens, I get other things that we need to talk about. Spirit and God knows more about what you need to hear than what we want to hear. Okay. Um, but it's not necessarily about the brother. Are, are you so? So, okay. So they bring me to my old house, the color red and the name. We got the name of your brother. Um, are you do you have an on and off relationship with him or have there been times where you've been very distant, either physically or emotionally and then Just you're physically physically we've been separated but never emotionally relationships okay. and that physical distance because like there's a wide range of relationships some brothers and sisters are the best of friends my sister hasn't talked to my family in eight years so are you guys it sounds like what you're telling me is you're emotionally connected but you're separated by distance is that correct we, we had been we are not at current this current time but in the oh, past so you are okay and he's the only brother you have no okay so is there a situation with a sibling? Because um, what happens is if I get the name of a sibling, there's tens of thousands of names and that's your sibling. Maybe we have to talk about some other sibling situation that it might possibly be going on that spirit wants to talk about. Are you either emotionally or physically distant from a sibling um, to the point where it affects you on a pretty significant level? I would say no. Uh, there is distance, but it doesn't, I mean, distance, physical distance between one brother, but it does not affect me negatively. It's very possible maybe you're with someone else. Well, if, if you have the Connor and the, uh, or what do we say? And the Jack Connor, Jack, and Brian, yeah. Yeah, and then the, the, I'm with you. I just have to figure out where we're going with it. So I think I got to go back to the kitchen thing. So just hold on a second. No, I am with you. Uh, and it is your sibling. Yes, I have to stick with this. Were you in a fight or a distance or did you have to team up with a sibling to do something that might have been uncomfortable? It almost feels like here's you, here's one of the siblings and it's like, er, uh, it's like a little bit of an uncomfortable feeling. So I don't know if you had to like work with them on a project and you didn't want to or you got in an argument and it's not, um, it's not resolved yet or maybe you agree to disagree, but there's something uncomfortable in the sibling arena. If you don't understand that, I can go a different route. But when I get it, it's like usually 
There's something about it. Let me see if I can get the message behind it. Do you have one parent here and one who's passed? No, both are passed. Oh, both are passed? <laughs> I'm sorry for your loss of your parents. Thank you. Was one of them, when one of them was here, when the other one had passed, when it was one and one, because I just see the split, was there an issue or something you had to work on with a sibling for them? Maybe, you, maybe for instance, here's an example. We had to take care of mom before she passed, but my brother wasn't really doing a good job. And I kind of had to take over. And so I was kind of pissed at him for that, but I'm still not mad at him, but I'm, I wonder if mom's upset with him. It feels like that type of dynamic. Um, well, no, I, I mean, we did have to take care of my mother. I, I think I, I was the main caregiver for my mom. But, and you're um, okay with that? There's no other, um, like, hey, you know, Rich or Brian should have showed up and they, they really didn't do it, but I, but I did, you know, kind of, there's no bitterness there. And no, no, that, bitter, no bitterness. Okay. Is there, it's so weird. I know like 200 people are watching saying, oh man, there's something here. Um, when you get the, that many names and, it, and I'm here and I know I, and they show me my old kitchen floor. I don't know why they chose that of all things. Um, but there's some disconnect between you or your, I mean, it's got to be you and a sibling. And I feel like it relates to one of your parents when obviously when mom was here. Um, what's, let me see, can I get you the message? All right, I'm going to go with this. How do you connect with Australia or kangaroos? I'm not, I don't really. Um... <laughs> no that's okay i when i get the symbol i have the word why would they are you thinking of going in australia have you been in australia was there a conversation about or did mom go to australia was there some treatment in australia when they show me a kangaroo it's usually australia sometimes can be kangaroo maybe it's captain kangaroo and mom loved him um we almost got stationed in australia but it didn't happen but that would be the only um connection. almost got stationed in australia was that when your parents when your mom was alive no, well, yeah, my mom was alive. My husband is in the was in the military. He's retired. We almost were stationed there, so I don't know. Okay, let me see if I can get you the main message. It's the same thing. It's so weird, and you know, I know it sounds like you're not validating it. Um, there's something with the siblings, and it feels like a sense of peace. Maybe it's between two of your siblings and not you. There's definitely something going on in the sibling realm that your parents, I feel like, I felt like it was one of them, I can't tell which one, wants to kind of like, if, if, are you okay with me to say this, say, say yeah. anything? Mm -hmm. um, it's like, let's cut the shit. Like, let's, let's <laughs> like, you know, because are two of your siblings not getting along? Or did they get in a, an issue when your mom was alive or something? There's there's tension right when I tune into it and I can't like, I can't switch. You know, a lot of media, like a lot of people say, oh, mediums just, I get the message and I have to figure out how. It could be your husband, but I mean, why would I get the name of your brother? Unless he's got to be who's a brother too. But there's this sibling thing going on or that happened when one of them was alive and it's not clear yet. And it feels pretty severe to where you'd know it. Um. I, I think I might have an idea, but I, I would prefer not to say while being filmed, but okay. um, That's uh, fine. it's between okay. somebody else, not me. That's okay. You under, and don't just say it, but you understand it? Yeah. This is important, but it's also like, hey, let's just, you know, we're not going to be around forever in this earth. Let's just bury the hatchet kind of feeling is what it feels I'll, like. I'll pass that message to okay. one of them. And, okay. <laughs> Thank right. you. You promise me that makes sense, though? You're not just saying it to have me move on? Uh, yes, I would not do that to you. I promise. <laughs> no, thank you. Well, you know, it's a little uncomfortable, um, especially yeah. in a situation where like your son, you want to connect with your son. This is important. Spirit knows better. Um, right. It didn't okay. occur to me until you were talking about possibly other siblings, not me. I was just. I know. I, I saw when you, you kind of like, oh, OK, and that's fine. But good. We're there. Who rubbed the shoulders uh, was, I got to talk about, hey, you'll know it's me because there was a rubbing of the shoulders. So I don't know if it's your parents or your son or someone else, but it's like, all right, let me ease into this session by showing you the rubbing of the shoulders. Who, who I can under I understand that with a, another son. Uh, still here? No. I, I have two sons on the other side. I understand the rubbing of the shoulders with my oh, younger son. Sorry. Thank you. And who's the, oh, so Jay is, is Jay is here. Jack yeah. is here. So he's, uh, okay. Yeah. There's something about the, oh, man, you two, oh, sorry for your loss. There's something about the siblings. I don't know if they're male, female. Um, I know one of you said was male. 
about this Jack's accomplishments or something new. And I feel like it's two things. Like he either just graduated or he just got married or like, it's like, hey, Ma, just so you know, we're not missing all the fun. So like, did he like just get a wet, get married or have a bachelor party? I mean, you look young, so I don't, I don't know, but like, I, so I got to talk about like, right hey, in the last like 12 to 18 months, he's done some pretty big things and we're really proud of him. Yes, Jack, yes, Jack is, kudos are, are, are very much appreciated for Jack. Okay. Did you forget to turn the stove off or just- jerk? Always. <laughs> Always. And who's Shelly or Sheldon or Sheila? I would say it's Sheldon, but it feels, um, they just showed me that guy Sheldon from um, that show. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know a Sheldon. Um, are, are they talking about that show uh, with that guy Sheldon? Like, uh, what's the name of that show, guys? With Sheldon, it's, uh, he, he's like a scientist kind of guy. And he's got all his- Big Bang Big Theory. Big Bang Theory. Thank you. Do you watch, oh, I, that's thank you to uh, Julie and Diana. Did, do you watch that? Did, he, did someone watch that? Was someone my, that- My mother-in-law watches it, but not not us. Uh, like a lot, like kind of yes. like, this has got to be like, this is my show. Don't, if, if Big Bang's on, don't talk to me. Kind she of loves it, yeah. Okay. Your mother-in-law, so that's your- My husband's mother. Okay. That's not it. That's not it. Is there okay. someone- that's part of it, but that's not totally it. Is there a Sheldon, Shelly, Sheila, living or past, uh, Shannon, Shane, or Sean? Super strong. Okay. Um, well, I do have a nephew named Sean, um, who is best friends with my youngest son. And okay. this cat that just jumped up is Shima. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Stop. That's crazy. Okay. Um, your youngest son's best friend, which is still a cousin, doesn't matter. Who's the lacrosse player? I can't, it's the, the That would have been Sean. Oh, okay. The racket was changing from like a tennis racket to a lacrosse racket. Um, I couldn't like make it out. And how do you connect with the M state? Mississippi, Michigan? No Miami. M state. My last name is McManus. So I connect with an M there. Um, do you connect with an M that's like a location like Miami or Minnesota or Mississippi or Michigan? I grew up in Mamaroneck, New York. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so man, you 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 this, sometimes I get these messages where like I feel into you and like it's this, but spirit's telling me something different. And I are you open for, for anything? Sure. It's this feeling of like. I have, have and had, it's very paradoxical, kind of oxymoronic, this amazing life. And then like this happened. And like you, there's a part of you that kind of understands it, but then there's part of you that's like, what the heck? Like why, and especially why, you know, obviously twice. Um, and it has to do with like your upbringing. Did you have a pretty good like life, like upbringing and like, average family and we went to college and we went on vacations and we had just an all-american kind of thing yeah mm -hmm. and then you get married and things are good and then you have these kids and then like boom and, and that okay um but then there's this little piece of you with a pie that's starting to get bigger and bigger partly because this group it feels like that you kind of like okay like i can do this i understand that this is something that was kind of like supposed to happen and I, as much as it sucks I, I've grown so much. The pain is still there, but and you think back to like your whole upbringing. You then you then you come to this realization, and then you quickly kind of learn what you've learned from the group, and um, there's a sense of peace that comes over you. I can understand that. Yeah, um, yeah. My ch my children are my biggest teachers, and this group has been incredible. And yeah, I've, I've learned so much about this journey. Sean is coming up again. So that's your son's best friend. Um, do you ever relate, just a yes or no, do you have a relationship with him? Yes. Okay. I feel like you're very important to him because was he, was he close to one of the children who's passed? Yeah. He, my youngest son, Aiden, who passed, um, oh. he and Sean were very, very close, even though they didn't live near each other, but they're very close cousins. I just kind of have to tell you that 
you're kind of a soul kind of guide or like a soul connection with that that young man and i think that your relationship with him is very important so um keep nurturing that and keep um he may ask you for things that maybe might be a little uncomfortable or unorthodox maybe, maybe it's financially maybe it's for a house to stay in something along those lines but you know you're just going to do it as um did I, did I did she leave or did she just move on my screen no i'm here oh there you are okay yeah someone else just popped where you were um so that nurt that they want to talk about the nurtureness of that relationship and how important it is to both of you not yes, only to I keep am. your son's memory alive but also to um um for him as well because i always tell a lot of parents like your children's friend you're the mom of their best friend and that relationship is so important and they bring up their if you guys have been on any of these other calls they always bring up their best friend's name it happens almost all, almost all the time and then they go on to say how important that relationship is yes i said sheldon and his name is sean but guys that's how it works and then when we tune in the big bang and here's an example guys she said, oh, my mother-in-law watches it literally all the time. But then when I felt into it, it was like, eh, that's not it. So then you move on to where it feels right. It's almost like kind of navigating. Um, but there is, okay, but it is still something about that. Um, is, how do I say that? Is your mother-in-law, and I, I, think you're, I think you made some eye contact with your husband, and no offense, but is, is your mother-in-law like um, stuck in her ways kind of? little bit maybe some right like yeah you're like oh no she's not yes she is <laughs> um is, i got two names together maybe you can ask your husband i get frank and ed like together frankie and eddie i, I never i don't you they don't usually come together like that this may be a piggyback. Someone might have a Frank and Ed together. It popped in really weirdly. It didn't feel like it was part of this. So if he can't connect with that, a lot of times, like remember the beginning, I kept going and going until you kind of figured it out. This one feels a little different. It might go somewhere else is piggybacking right. and they have a Frankie and Ed's going to pick up on this. But the, the main message behind the mother-in-law is there's something about going easy on her because she may have gone through some things in her life that, that, that maybe we don't understand about. Yes. Uh, yeah. So to, I, to go, yes. so to go easy on maybe sometimes if she snap, you know, I don't, I don't know her personality, but if she gets a little irritated or she yells or she doesn't have the perspective that maybe some other people do, it's kind of like to go easy on her and let mm -hmm. her be her. And uh, I don't think she's going to change from that anyway. Is what kind of yeah, yeah. She's the sweetest woman ever. So yeah, but I understand the go easy on her. She's going through something. Yeah, yeah. Could be sweet, but she still could be like, no, oh, yeah. this is the way I'm going to be. You know, it doesn't, not, not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but I also do believe that there was some, I get the word turmoil or some issue, some things that happened throughout her life that kind of leads her to act in some specific ways. Not bad, but very, but different, I guess. Yeah, that I'm makes sense. That makes sense. Um, there is a, when they show me the movie E.T., that is my symbol for like, I hear you, I hear you, but it also may have something to do with the movie. I know it was a popular movie back like more when I was younger, but do you connect with the movie or the literally verbally speaking out loud like constantly to them or both uh, um well no i speak out i speak to them all all day long yeah okay and anything with the movie et at all or reese's species because usually when they bring that up it's like yeah i hear you but also like you just watched it or we used to watch it all the time or... yeah we just had a discussion about reese's pieces when i was with my family in new york about how much i hate them <laughs> <laughs> okay how, how recent like in the last week or two this weekend i was just up in new york this weekend so with is my there a way to let you know that they're with you and you already know that but it's those little things like why would he say that of all things right. um it's hey i hear you then that's what spirit does guys they mention like multiple things to let you know that they're with you i hear you and i was with you when you were talking about the Reese species just this weekend um who's ronald or richard or ryan um not i don't riley uh randy rachel very strong it could be one of their friends um ricky maybe sure. somebody else is popping in nope still for you sorry okay. oh um, no that's okay show me will ferrell why would you show me will ferrell how would that relate to r will ferrell uh oh wait <laughs> Oh my gosh. No, I know this. <laughs> what was his character? Um, Ron. Oh, Ron Burgundy. Burgundy. 
Okay, there is a huge joke. My oldest son was in, okay, my husband was in a fraternity in um, college and there is a picture of him. And my son looked at it and said, oh my God, I was raised by Ron Burgundy. So it's been a big joke. My okay. even Jack has given him Ron Burgundy things. Perfect. Okay. Superimpose my husband's face on it. I got goosebumps. All right. So that's how strong, I don't know which one it is. I think you would, you would know better. I don't, this isn't a, a situation for me. Very that would often. be, that would be Connor making fun of his dad because. Perfect. So, and I'm sorry again for your loss. Please know that there's more to this message, but for him to be strong enough to show me the R, mom's not getting it. Boom, Will Ferrell. Oh my God. I would have never even thought of that. That is just kind of a way so you can put the pieces together to let you know a very important message. He, if this is the, whoever I'm talking with had a, an, had a very, very good life. And, and even though it may have led, led, you know, ended way earlier than we wanted to, he got it all in. And I also feel like there's one of the parents or both of you guys, which is very rare, is kind of on the strict side. But with this one, you kind of let the leash a loose a little bit more because you knew his soul, your soul knew his soul needed to kind of expand a little bit. And even if he got himself into a little bit of trouble, he found his way out. Yeah. Yeah. And he wants to thank you for that because your loving emotion, including your husband towards this little bit of a loosening of the leash allowed him to be who he needed to be while he was here. Thank you. So thank you for that. He wants to talk about graduation. Did he just graduate? Did he not graduate? I got some things around the graduation. He did not graduate. No, I mean, he graduated high school, but he did. He um, did not graduate college. Okay, so he was. So okay, that makes it tough. So was he close to graduating college? He was, was he about like, a year away. It's a little far. Did you go to? This is. I'm sorry. This is difficult. Did you go to his graduation or was there something about the graduation, even though he wasn't, did they do something for him on the graduation? There's something about the graduation. But the message is still the same if you can't validate it. It's um, not. It's, the message is the same anyway. You can maybe validate it there because I think they're recording this. Okay. It's, it's almost the same message if like um, a soul will show me like shoes that are sitting on the ground still, or they show me a poster, their room is still the same. This is like, hey, I just want to let you know that this was my time. I wasn't going to be that doctor or that person or that it just, it wasn't going to happen. And I'm completely okay with that is what he's telling me from his perspective. And I, and the, in your, like, he shows me like, um, like rock and it's like in you and it's like healing. You're like, you've progressively came, even though you have all this pain, you slowly start to understand that this is just part of like God's plan as much as it kind of stinks and your healing is so um important and it's it's progressive but also like i wasn't and maybe this is even more for dad or even everybody who's listening i wasn't supposed to graduate i wasn't supposed to get married in that lifetime i wasn't supposed to have children and and you know that's part of the reason i don't know if he was kind of funny but he's being a little inappropriately funny like that's why you had so many kids he's kind of joking <laughs> and i and i and i have to honor the personality because a lot of times they say like something is uncomfortable for me to say but you must have multiple or more because there's going to be kids and grandkids and there's, if not, then they're adopted or something. I don't know your family, but they make me feel like you have enough around you to where, even though you miss them, you're going to have everything you want in this lifetime. I, well, um, yeah, I, I understand it. Um, not in that way, but I understand what you're talking about. When they show me pickles, it's usually my symbol for literally like pickles um, or, or a new baby. So I don't know which it is that you, did you, somebody love pickles or are they called named pickles or, or is there a new baby, brand new baby? I'm talking brand new baby in the family. I do not, but I have a very good friend. I don't know if she's on here, <laughs> but pickle is, and, and I feel like I know her daughter very well, even though I've never met her physically. Um, and pickle is her, is her nickname. Oh, and she's a friend of yours? She's a friend of mine in Helping Parents Heal. And you met her through this group? Yes. This is a, a message from them, uh, who I don't know, I'm assuming both, that, that you like, you kind of just fell right into this group. And it was almost like it was divine, but by accident, but not, but you just melded right in. It's just, it was, it's just a, 
it's just one of many relationships they tell me you have with many people in the group because um, you they, they, so I don't can't tell which or both but you have a lot of friends people like you you're very you have a, a, um, a magnetic personality and a lot of people well. gravitate for you gravitate to you um, so so uh, he, he, he's so somebody said you're making her blush um, can you give me something else what are you showing Only me blush I'm sweating <laughs> did you guys play a lot of board games yes I'm talking like we had family game night, like with the yes, kids. Like the kids. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, all the time. There, there's a message to your husband, especially, and to you for providing a safe, happy, healthy home. And unfortunately, in this world, there's not a lot of them, as many as we would like there to be. And they want to thank you for that. Um, and I would even say, even after the grief and everything, you still maintained a happy, healthy home. And a lot of it has to do with both of you guys being the foundation of the home. Thank you. It, yeah, I, we were surrounded by a lot of love. I give credit to everybody who surrounded us, but thank you very much. I and appreciate one last thing, I know you want to go, but they show me a Slinky. Did you just find the Slinky? Is there someone named Slinky? I know that Slinky, I think, is one of the Pac-Man people. Is it the Slinky or Pinky? I don't know, but I do see the Slinky. Did, did you just buy one? Did you have one? I mean, I always tell, we all played with a Slinky when we were little, but usually when they mention something, it's a little bit more severe. In fact, you know what I see now? You know that dog in Toy Story that has like the, the slinky dog? Mm -hmm. you know, like, did you, is it something to do with Toy Story or the slinky? I, I don't know. I'm not recognizing that. So this when this happens, a lot of times maybe we're moving on. You okay. still maybe connect to the pinky later or the slinky later, but this is definitely about Toy Story because they keep flashing me Woody and like Tom Hanks and like all the characters So and Buzz. So thank you for... Um, for letting me bring through. I am hoping that it helped you and gave you some sort of peace time. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you very much. I appreciate sure you, it. And someone said, make sure you turn off the stove. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank um, you. The energy that's coming through that may have to do with the, um, Toy Story is they're playing me the song I can see clearly now. So I don't know if it's because they like that song or they had something happen to their eyes. Uh, I do get somebody who they make me feel piggybacked on come some of the messages, including the SH name like Sean. So I got to talk about the eyes or the I can see clearly song, Toy Story or that Slinky. Um, and the S name like Sean. And, and I would like, because there's 220 in here that to have every, you know, all of those make sense to you. And they are telling me that they do mess with your TV and your lights and like, it's, it's and not, not a little bit. It's like flashing your volume. It's like obvious, like it's me and you already know it. They make me feel like. Then we got to get this Toy Story or Slinky thing along with the lights, the SH name, and um, Amy Sanders, maybe. Okay, Amy Sanders, let's see. Is she identifying with a lot of what you're saying? Not um, a lot, I just saw one that kind of like stuck out to me. Okay, so. Amy, uh, let's see, I, Irene, can you unmute? Sure. Amy, that would be wonderful. I've asked her to unmute. Thank you, Kathy. You Hi, I, I don't know the about the S name, but um, definitely um, Toy Story. And you said the your son was the B name, um, Brand, Brandon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brandon. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Um, the BR came up in the previous reading, so that mm -hmm. will you get to the S name. Um, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to say like Sean or Shauna or Shelly or Sheena or Shane. Um, and again, again, the name could be living or past. Sometimes um, it's like a teacher or a pastor or someone who really stepped up for you when they passed. Um, and it might not be the SH. It might be just the S. Sam? Um, I mean, a lot of people really stepped up but um i mean he 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 had a friend um steve sean I'm trying to think of his name 
he we it was kind of all a blur at the beginning so okay did, did he had a lot of friends honestly uh there is a guy on his football team sean he just had a, he had a lot of people okay you can maybe connect it later do you also connect with the kangaroo or the australia connection is there someone who was going to go there or went there or something about kangaroo or captain kangaroo uh honestly not that i know of um i mean i watched Cap captain kangaroo when i was a kid but I don't know if you uh, have me or not. Wait. Yep. No, hold on. That's it. Okay. It's not that. It's the message behind it is important. And it's kind of heavy. Are you open for anything? Yeah, please. Um, I get this feeling when I tune into when you mentioned something when you're that you were younger. And and this is heavy. And and when I do this, like I don't know that it's it. I kind of need you to validate it and tell me if it's not, because I almost feel awkward because if it's not, it's gonna be kind of weird. But like, yeah. I feel like you're like, how come I got to live my life up to the age I am, but like my son didn't. And it's like a constant thing. Like, and it's almost like you feel bad for him to a perspective, a perspective. That's what it feels like to me. If it's not you, or maybe I got the message wrong, but as soon as you mentioned something about your childhood, it's almost like, why do I get to live? And he doesn't kind of feeling, but I guess you would say that might apply to a lot of people, but sometimes it's not like that. Do you? think about that, wonder that, or like feel bad that you get to live and, and he doesn't. It's something like along that. Yeah, something along those lines, definitely. Hard to word it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, but we, the, yeah. The, the feeling overall is like, it's almost like, well, I got to get married and have kids and like do this and this. And like, he didn't get to do that. He's like supposed to be able to do that. And it's a, to me, it feels like a severe thing that you think about. It doesn't look like you're totally validating with that. And I don't want to mix up the message. Is that something that you and or someone really close to you, like either your husband or a sibling, like consistently thinks about or talks about? Yeah. Well, my, my daughter has a baby now and he really wanted children and you know, those two things do cross my mind. Um, I personally had kind of a hard childhood. So I'm just, you know, I do kind of think like, well, I lived through that and I'm still here. And maybe even been times where I didn't want to be here, but you know, never acted on it. But, yeah. you know, here I am still. And why do I get to, yeah, I guess I do think that. So this, again, it's going to be even more, and hopefully this makes sense because of the childhood you had and when i get the toy story i get this like all these kids all these dolls and running around laughing your goal was to give him kind of that type of um life that you didn't get to and you did a really good job about of that you know that right and i'm talking especially from like the time he was born until like you know you couldn't keep many longer i have no i'm sorry for your loss i have no idea how old he was but i'm talking from like zero to like to the time where they start kind of gravitating with their friends you yeah. provided him like it was perfect. And I, I think part, like a little of you knows that, but a lot of you needs to remind yourself of that constantly. Cause I think that might've even been your goal is to offer him something, but you did it though. It's more than just like, anyone can say, oh yeah, well, who a parent wouldn't, but you did. And I think you know that, but it's also really good to hear it more to let you know that he's there. I do also get the ET movie. So there's either something like you literally talk out loud to him and or ET is like a thing. Um, it's both. He was a Spielberg fanatic as a child. He was going to be a movie director at one point, he thought. So, but I also talk to him like all the time. Okay. Um, there's a very significant group of words I'm, I'm supposed to tell you. And um, I don't know how this makes sense to you, but it's not your fault. I'm hearing the words, it's not your fault. So I don't know if you blame, I don't know what happened. I have no idea but it's not your fault. There's nothing that you did that could have, or you could have done to change anything. And I think he wants you to take whatever blame from whatever did happen completely off your shoulders because I'm hearing literally, it's not your fault. And it looks like you make sense of that. And I don't know any of the details, but I'll let you sit with that and let you take the blame off yourself. And I think there's some, it's, it's a forgiveness, but it's more, I think of a misunderstanding on your part of like not, totally kind of understanding the whole context of what happened which is totally justifiable but it's like it's not your fault like at all like whatever it was not even like a little bit so don't feel like that like that um 
Oh, that's where the lily. So is there someone named Lily or did you plant the lilies? I, um, I buy star lilies. They're my favorite flower. Um, I go, I got a huge goosebump. And the words I heard were the way you love and cherish and care about the flowers. Imagine that times a million. That's how much I love you. Aww. And and I would and I would say usually when souls tell me that they either told you all the time or they didn't tell you enough. It's usually very extreme. So um, that type of way that you and I would do you, yeah. It's not just those though. Do you, do you get them a lot or you buy different kinds of them? Because it almost makes me feel like there's an abundance of these lilies. I mean, I just had some last month. I uh, it just tends to be the flower I buy people if I they make you happy. Smell. They make me happy. They smell really good. So okay, so he's saying like they you they make you happy. You made me happy. He's very adamant of of of, of letting you know the fact that like everything you did from the time he was born was was for him, and he felt and knew that. He's even joking, saying he was the favorite. <laughs> I don't so I don't <laughs> have. But, yeah, he uh, would say that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, are you playing me that song? I'm gonna trust that you are because I've never heard that. What okay. is it? So it's an older song and you, you know, you look you look younger only because he would, it would be, anyway, I hear that song, turn the radio up for that, for that sweet sound, hold me close, never let me go. So I don't know if he's telling me to tell you to turn the radio up and listen, mom, I'm playing you tons of songs or, and, or that song means something specific. Um, I'm gonna look that one up, but we he gives us a lot of songs. And, okay, so uh, keep yeah, turning yeah. the radio up because I've, I've, I've never had him do. But you may, you know, if you ever had turn the radio up for that sweet sound, hold me yeah. close. I'm a terrible singer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But so um, he I would think, he would just turn the he would get in the car and just change the station and turn it up. So so he still plays you music. So make sure you pay so attention he, to that. I wake up with songs, I get them on the radio, yeah. He wants you, he's kind of funny because he's like, I know what you're doing for St. Patrick's Day. So I don't know if like <laughs> you're gonna go out and party or you have this party plan, but it feels a little mischievous. It feels like a little like, and it's good. He wants you to like do this. So I don't know if you're going to a parade and you're gonna have some drinks, but he's like, let's do this mom. Let's like get back into it. So are you going like partying this year on, on St. Patrick's Day? I mean, I've been wondering what to do because when he, he passed a week after St. Patrick's and it was COVID, and come was coming and we couldn't do anything okay, okay. and like he had texted me what's up you know and then we didn't really have any plans so he ended up just getting you know beer and taking it home at, at his house but yeah so so the so, so like kind of on the fence like do i do something or not so because i don't know that that was that around the time he passed and he mentions it it's a two-part message of like not only i think secondarily would be this saint patty's day like i want you to go have fun but every time a year it's probably um really challenging for you and he wants you to kind of just live your life while you're here even though you miss the shit out of him is what he says <laughs> that's, that's and i'm gonna real. pause this real quick i want to tell the group there's still 220 people on here what can happen is and i see it it's illogical i see it all the time and you even saw it with the first two people. They had the Sean person, the, the can, Kevin Kangaroo, which led me to a message. And the other, there's a couple other things. There will be some of you who are like, oh my gosh, this is for me. It's for her and it's for you. I know it sounds almost like a stretch sometimes and it's illogical. Don't stretch it. But if I'm saying a name and a number and St. Patrick's Day and this, and it all resonates with you very strongly, take it. It's your loved one in spirit piggybacking like, giving you messages through other people. It happened to me when I went to go see Long Island Medium. My dad came through and she was giving a session to someone across the room and it was my dad, his name, my sister's name, his birthday, her lucky quote. I mean, it was insane, but she was talking to him. So if I'm doing this for Amy, enjoy her getting the reading. But if some of session, if some of you are getting some stuff from it, take it. Your loved one's taking this opportunity to give little like postcards and like, hey, I'm here too. Uh, I'll, I'll say this and this is for other people too it's not well it could be but i'm seeing a cookie and it's the ones that have the white cream in the middle but i i don't think it's the oreos it's the ones that have the like swirlies on them and they're like vanilla 
So I don't know if you like like them or you just bought them or he loved them. The feeling I get behind it is like you always got him like treats or you always like brought him souvenirs or you'd stop the store and getting something a little extra. The message behind that is like your soul knew that his soul wouldn't be here for, for a long time. So any I got goosebumps really strong. So any time that you took had an opportunity to spend time or do something nice, you did it. And and it looks like you understand that. And and there's a thank you. This is interesting. I never had this happen. There's a thank you from him, but there's a thank you from you, your soul, to follow <laughs> through on some of those thoughts. Don't forget, guys, and I don't know if it's a fact, but from everything I've understood, we are energy and we are souls. And we're part of this great thing a lot of us call God. And we come in this costume and this uniform and this body and we experience pain and suffering and joy and smells and food and and we're all here to experience and take it all in but um i got off track a little bit but um recognizing that the things that happen are are, are part of like a bigger plan um and you're gonna we all return home we really do we all get back to like pure love uh, we are there now i think we just don't realize it it looks like you made sense of all that um yeah i thank you so much it i yeah i yeah do you understand like the cookies and getting them the treats and like taking oh, all the them, time all and the taking time. the moments he's, he's just my favorite again um you're gonna yeah. try to get me a song i don't know that's not your okay i don't know much about this band but steely dan and i i, I don't know any songs from steely dan I, I heard of him but i don't even know what type of music he is is there someone named dan or is it steely dan I mean, there is a group called Steely Dan, yeah. Is, is there any song that you like know or like or that, that reminds you of um, him? I think there's a song on his um, Spotify by them. Um, his dad really liked Steely Dan. Oh, um, oh so you're, his father likes Steely Dan? That's like one of his people? I mean, we all like him, but yeah, he, it was like one of his favorites. Okay, all right. Um, keep paying attention to the music. Uh, you find the pennies? Yeah, oh, yeah. They're from him, okay? So please know that. And you already know that, but make sure you look. He's like, look at the years, Ma. You don't always do. look at the year. Oh, well, there's there's times you don't because he's making me feel like you missed a couple of them. So, you know, keep them. They always make sense. Um, but sometimes he says you have to think a little bit outside the box. Have you been reading the Bible lately? Um, I've been, I've been listening to some things. Yeah. Like spirit, like, like I'm going to say this, usually yeah. religious things. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, he's almost like the Bible's not that bad of a book. Um, but so if you're getting into that sort of thing, um, it's like, it's good for you. Um, he's also making me feel someone in your very close knit family doesn't believe in this stuff and doesn't really like understand it or they almost, almost to the point where like, don't do that kind of feeling. A little bit, yeah, yeah, there is. Yes, this, my this feels under. like a lot of this, this feels like a lot of it like you shouldn't even mention it to them or something like that. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he's showing me the everlasting gobstopper. So I don't know if like Willy Wonka was a thing or you have a gobstopper or Yeah. I mean we, we watched all those movies. He loved you know movies. Oh, oh thank you. Okay, so he's a show. Oh he's he's an older soul. He said, hey, Ma, remember that part in the end of the movie when they get in that little thing and they go up and they experience, I got goosebumps, like both arms, and they experience this like, and it's like, oh, he's like, that's how I feel. So don't feel, don't feel bad that I didn't get to have kids and blah, 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 because I am like, Uber. I think it's the word Uber. So either you're an Uber driver because it doesn't happen often. <laughs> Someone does Uber. I am Uber like in a world that you you know you'll be happy when you get here like, but you still have but you're still there and you're going to be there it's like this good feeling of both but i want you to know that that's how i feel right now when he blasts through the roof and he's like oh that's how he felt just so you know that and feels consistently it's kind of like a little glimpse of heaven i would tell you what it feels like thank you yeah um, and then he's playing me this song knocking on heaven's door um by like you know, <laughs> guns and roses yeah. or whatever that is uh-huh okay. yeah um, and we got a lot of random heaven songs at the beginning. You had a what? We had a lot of heaven songs at the beginning. Okay. 
Okay. It's almost like he's like wants to tell everyone on here, yes, heaven's real. We're all going to get there. Mom, read your Bible. I'm here. I'm good. Willy Wonka, thank you for everything you've done for me. And I'm in a good place. And uh, thank you. They always thank me. It's the weirdest thing. But, um, you know, the, hopefully tonight this gives you a sense of peace to let you know he's still with you. And did you make um, muffins or something? Corn yeah, I made corn muffins the other night. Oh, <laughs> I even said corn. Perfect. Um, so you... Okay. I'll, so don't forget whoever you have left in your life to take care of, whether it be husband, boyfriend, whatever, daughter, son, whatever, you're starting to recognize that you, you got to step up and be the mom, the wife, the friend, whatever, whatever role you have and whatever relationships you have. You're recently, I would say in the last, especially with like the baking, the muffins and stuff, you realize like, okay, this happened. It's been, sounds like a couple of years. I got to step up and I got, and I got to do this. And um, mm -hmm. he's making me feel like you're doing a really good job at that. Okay. Um, are you, Thanks, yeah. what's that? I, I did need, I did need this. I've been struggling a lot lately. Um, are you, so he, I'm just going to give you this. Are you investing or something or are you starting a new business or something? Or did you just buy something that you want to invest I'm in? I'm a realtor. Okay. Well, the, when they show me Monopoly and he gave me the feeling that I had, it's like money's coming and it's been coming and it's always going to be coming. So if it's a worry, stop. If it's not, enjoy. And if you already have it, then just, enjoy. just you know, enjoy. You know what it feels like. Great. It's not going to be a force of an issue for you. Good. <laughs> and say hi to Kevin or Candace. Or My ex-husband's name is Kevin. Is that his father or some? Yeah. Stuff? Wait, that's yeah. his father's name? Kevin, yeah. And there's a cadence who just had a birthday today in the family, but. So this is an example of where it would be both. So, mm -hmm. and, and I get just, and I'm, I'm assuming it's from the tone I'm getting from you by the, his father kind of things. Maybe say hi to him, if, if whether you don't talk to him or not saying, hey, whether you believe in this or not, that's the one name that he said before I left to say hi to. So, and you have it on tape. Yeah, he actually does believe. Yeah, I didn't think it was him. My boyfriend, that's not his on yeah. board. Yeah. Um, well, I send you lots of love. Thank you for letting me bring him through. Make sure you tell, you know, it's weird. Why didn't he say, tell dad? I said, hi, I think it's more powerful when he said yeah. his name. I don't even his know. Name. It's that much more powerful to let you know that it's him. Yeah, it's cool. Thank you. And he's, and one, he, he just keeps going on. I'll, I'll, I'll cut it off. <laughs> he's talking felt... about the song about the rain. So either uh, No Rain by Blind Melon or Sunshine and Rain or Millie Vanilli, like, Blame it on the rain. He's playing me like rain songs. Do you understand this? Looks like you. We love the rain. He loved the rain. Okay. Um, he's like, oh, he's very powerful. He says, well, here we can make our own rain, is what he mm. said. I literally, I didn't hear it with my ears, but I just felt it. Like here, we can make our own rain anytime we want. So that's what it feels like. Please, awesome. anytime you picture like, oh, he wanted kids, he wanted to do this, picture the Willy Wonka and, and Charlie and just like, oh, that's how he... That's the state that he's in right now. It feels like nirvana. It feels like heaven. It feels like the promised land. He's there, but he's making me feel like, last thing, you're here. You're going to keep doing what you're doing. And then like, you, it's almost like when you're ready to go, you're going to be ready to go. Like, I would almost even say now you're like, when it's my time, I know it is. I get to be with him. I get to do this, but, but you have a lot of time here still. So make sure you capitalize it, utilize it, have fun, smell the smells, taste the tastes. You know, you're, you're limited in your body compared to what we are in spirit form. So all these experiences you get to take with you. So just enjoy it. I'm fine. There's also a Mason or a Max. There is a Max. And then this is probably piggybacking to the next one. Uh, was it a friend of his? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a little brother figure to him. Okay. Maybe reach out and say he mentioned his name. I will. And uh, did you just find his old Matchbox cars? Or his little cars? Or did you buy someone a little car? Did you see his little cars? Well, there's lots of things to do with little cars, but... Um... He has like little derby cars he made in Boy Scouts, Cub oh. Scouts. Okay. Did you give them away? Because he makes me feel like there's almost an honor around them. Do you display no. them or? I have one. I gave one to his dad. Perfect. Um, are you, well, last thing, sorry. When they show me pinball, did you move a lot? 
when he was little? Um, no. Did you have a pinball so we, machine? Uh, no. He liked games on his phone, but mm -hmm. we had a, a very big move that was significant in his life. But no, not a lot. Okay. If it was a big move, did you always worry how it affected him? Because he's making yes. me feel like, stop that. Even now, yeah. I would think you kind of do. It's all good. Even if I had a hard time with this, it just, it was meant to be, it, it's don't, I would even forgive yourself and take the blame off of that too, because it was meant to be. And I would even say that you, uh, some people really thrived from that move, even though maybe it, it took a little while from it. I would even say maybe he did eventually, but it was all meant to be, and that's not your fault either. So please take that off your plate as well. Thanks. And I'm, say, he, I'm sorry, he keeps going. Did you just buy paper plates or use paper plates or like come into a bunch of paper plates? Because he's joking about using the paper plates, but why don't you use the dishes? It's something about that. It's kind of funny. Yeah, um, we kind of like to keep them on hand and I almost bought some recently and I was like, no, nah, we'll just use the dishes. Okay, so it was a thought, a recent thought? It was a recent thought. So know that when those moments happen, it's just their way to let you know they're with you. Mm -hmm. And then they end with the toy story to remind you how great of an upbringing and how great of a life you provided him. So please always remember that. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you for um, letting me. Bless you. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. Goodness gracious. These have been just amazing. And um, I think that the most important thing for everybody tonight is to understand that there are so many messages for all of us and everything that you're saying. Everyone is typing into the chat box uh, things that apply to them as well. So you're hitting a lot of parents with these readings, Daniel. Thank you. Um, And I always tell people in like groups like this, like I don't choose spirit chooses. Like when you, when I, when she came on her comment, even though she only kind of resonated with one of them, it was like, kind of just stuck out to me kind of feeling, you know? Um, I have the same stuff's coming through still. This kangaroo is like a big deal. Who connects with the kangaroo, the M name, and then the 13? And you got to get all three of them. Could be Australia, could be Captain Kangaroo, could be something with kangaroo. M name and 13. And if you can, write it in there how you, may, how you understand it, if you don't mind. By the way, I watched the movie, the little YouTube thing, the YouTube thing you guys did, and I read the book, or most of it. Really powerful. Oh, thank you. You're talking about thank helping. You. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know that existed. Someone sent me, I think you, Elizabeth, maybe sent me the book. Yeah, I sent you the book, yes. And well, I started thank you. reading that. Um, and then there was a woman named Carol who wrote, a, I think her name was Carol. She wrote a, a book about her son. Yes. My, I'm still here or something like that. I read that. It was really good. Oh, really good. I don't know if she's here tonight, but that was really, really good. If anyone hasn't read that, it's a very comforting book. It is. I agree. She wrote a chapter in her book as well. Um, oh, so. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Um, I, said, really, yeah I started reading it and then I just went to the you watch the, the, the movie. She's an affiliate leader, caring listener and a board member. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. OK, good. Yeah. I actually read it when I had COVID for the second time. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. Take my book. Oh. All right. Uh, not sticking out. Hang on.
Well, who wrote the book, Elizabeth? The book is um, actually I compiled it, but it's by all of the all of the people who were in Life to Afterlife. Mom, can you hear me? By Craig McMahon. So, in case anybody's interested, all oh, the books go to Helping Parents Heal. I just saw that in the chat box. So, Carol is here. Carol's all right, here. Th Teresa Woods. Teresa Woods. So, um, Irene, could you unmute her? Yes, I've asked her to unmute. Great. Oh, you're quick. <laughs> Hello, Daniel. Hi. Your name and you look familiar. Have you ever had a session with me before? I did have a session with you, not visual okay. though. Okay. Was it pri a private session between you and I? Yes. Okay. I don't remember any of it, so that's okay. Um, but when I read, read your comment, it kind of stuck out to me. How do you connect with the, the fruit stripe gum or the zebra? I have donkeys. Oh, you, ha you have donkey? Like you own donkey? Are they like zebras? Excuse my ignorance. Are they like, like? Yeah, well, they're not striped, but they're like zebras. Okay. Are you open to anything? Yeah. Are you stuck? Yeah. Like, are you okay? But I don't know how. I don't need to know how. It almost makes me feel like multiple ways you're stuck. Like, I don't know if it's physically or emotionally or relationship wise or in life. It just feels like. And who's the B name? Like Brian or Brad? Or Brianna, Be Bell, Bella. Could it be a last name? Very rarely. Brianna or Bell. It almost feels female. Belinda, Brenda. And there's two of them. Ha! Huh. There's two B's. So try. Good luck trying to get one. Bruce. I feel like one's male, one's female. Brandon. Brandon. Okay. There's one. Is uh, who's that? I do foster care and he was the treatment coordinator and he passed away at 34. Oh, I'm sorry. We trained together, like very close. Trained like the, the donkeys or like trained? No, he was the one that looks after the kids that comes and visits every week. Okay. And he was new when I was new. So we kind of grew up in this together. Was his passing tragic? It, we Everybody was blindsided. Do you still work there? Yes. Okay. He makes me feel like, please let everyone know I'm okay. Like, it's that easy. Um, and who's the... I don't know what this is, but I'm seeing a typewriter. And someone's like, almost like a stenographer. Like, is that what they're called? The people in court that like take all mm -hmm. the things? Does someone type like that, or is I don't know. I don't know what you do at work. What work did you say you do? Oh, I have a foster. I do foster care. Do you have a typewriter or something, or like an old computer? My foster son just got in trouble. Is going to have to go to court. Oh, so that's the and that's someone related. To, okay. And his name's Kevin. Oh, isn't that crazy? Okay. okay. And you're really worried about him or worried about the situation? Yes. And I have another one. I had another foster child named Max. Make sure you let the Brandon, the whoever the B is, that, that he's okay. And uh, I think that a lot of people at work like him. Or was he someone who kind of got along with a lot of different people? He was Superman. So, oh, okay. So please let him know that, that, uh, that I'm okay. Um, did he leave a girlfriend behind or a wife? He was engaged. Okay. And he left a son behind. Ugh. Who is the T? Do you know who the T is over there? Is that his son or the wife? Like Timmy or? That's my brother, Teddy. Oh, you know, is he passed too? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry for your loss. 
There also is a T over with, with Brandon too, though, unless they knew each other, which they probably didn't. There's another T over there, Timmy, Taylor, Tommy, something like that around their family. I don't know them that well. But so. do you know, I do feel like though you have a way to connect with her somehow through work or through her friend. Tell him he's okay. Um, I would even say so far as she's already in another relationship. Uh, and there's a message of like, it's okay. So I don't okay. know how long ago it was, but she's, I feel like she's kind of moved on. So I don't know how long ago Brandon passed, but um, I don't even know if it makes sense or if you know that, but it'll be okay. two years. Okay. She's so coming if, up on two years. If, if and when she's in another relationship, um, it's almost like I bless that. And if they use that words, they were usually pretty like religious or faithful person. They say the word blessed. So um, I don't know if you could validate, but that's fine. Um, I would even say he had a Bible because I can almost see like the scripture. So, um, and I would even, oh, so Philippians 4.13. So, you know, I would say that his fiance was faithful as well. And that's what carried her through. Um, and I get that Philippians 4.13, which probably means something to her. It's probably, it's a fairly popular verse, but if you reach out to her and talk to her, let her know that. Um, okay. Someone's talking about robots. Did someone build a robot? I'm getting like the e e e. So I don't know if it's like a Mork and Mindy, like Nanu Nanu or something, but I get like this robot type of feeling. It's very, so someone My the son loves Mork. E e e e. Yeah. My like son loves, yeah. Mork like and Mindy. Mork and, like Nanu Nanu kind of? Yeah. Come on, really? Like love, yeah. like, wow. Okay. Um, and you, you, you said your son? Is, is he passed? Okay, I'm sorry for your loss. Do you have, a, now this is very uncommon with a son to a mother, usually it's the opposite, but do you have a ring of his or do you have the ring or something about the ring? Whose ring do you have? It's very strong. My mother's. You still have it, wear it, love it. It's worth a lot sentimentally and value wise. Yes. Okay. And how do you connect with the Brady Bunch? <laughs> They're playing <laughs> the, Brady, the Brady Bunch songs like, you got to keep on, keep on. <laughs> did you used to like watch it or like, yeah, I mean, I did. But. We did watch it. Me and my brother did watch it. My family. Is your family very dynamic in that? Like there's a lot of very strong personalities that are very different. Some people don't talk. Some people get along. It's very like, kind of like. Almost yeah, like, like a I was the cop. My brother wanted to be the drug dealer, that kind of thing. Sure. I don't know if your mom was like, I don't know how to describe this personality. How do I, she's almost like passive aggressive. And I don't get that a lot in spirit form. Was she like that in life? Yeah. It's, and I, it's weird that she's saying like, she's kind of, it's, it's, it's almost like a backhanded compliment. It's like, she's doing pretty good considering. Is kind of like what it is it's, it feels like that from mom so i don't know if you guys were that would make sense okay okay as long as you understand it but don't forget the message young lady and <laughs> i don't know why she says that but you're, you're doing you're doing all right okay um mom she doesn't i don't know if this is mom but she doesn't feel overly like lovey huggy kissy type of mom to me no okay but i still love you she says yeah okay she says, you always wanted to be a mom. Is that yep. true? Is that something you always, and you still have uh, children here on this side? I have two daughters and a foster son. Perfect. Oh, and okay. Okay. See, and this is an example of how I forgot that you were a foster parent. You always wanted to be a mom enough so much that it, okay. So this is more like, Hey, this is your soul. You need, and this is tr trust and faith and exactly where you are. And we're going to get to the point about you being stuck. Um, it's just something innately in you that feels the need to nurture. And that is part of many of your lifetimes. I don't know if you believe in reincarnation, but you, many of your lifetimes, you wanted to be a mom, 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 mom. And like, in, I would even say in multiple lives, you had eight or 10 kids because you just love, I just see like rabbits, like swarming, like all over me and just like, here, I'm here for you kind of feeling. Um, part of this lifetime plan was to experience what you experienced so that you can give that much more love to many other people because i feel like because of that you were able to do more for that many more people is what it feels like 
You understand that? Yes. And who's Randy or Ray? I'm a, I have a good friend named Randy, like one of good, my best friends. Good, in, a good, like a, you know. like a, this, this person's like got white light around them kind of person. This yeah. is like someone who's either big time religious, big time spiritual, or just a freaking awesome, really good person. You've been friends for a long time? Yes. Okay. Good guy to have on your side. Yes. Does he drive you or pick you up or like offer you rides or something? Or did he give you his car? There's something about him in the car. Does he drive? He's worked on my car. Okay. And he perfect. doesn't even drive, but. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So here's the message behind that. Even though you've gone through some things, obviously, you're persevering and God has placed significantly beneficial, loving people in your life. And the more your perspective understands the positive, which I think you're getting better at. I'm not like saying anything bad, but like you've been progressively getting better at that, at getting better at um, looking more at the positive. I don't know if you're reading books about self-help books, it feels like, and you're starting to change your perspective. I think between this group and being more open-minded and accepting of others, um, you've really come a long way. And I, I think that your mom and your son are, and, and people, everyone over there wants to congratulate you for that, for really persevering. Um, Cause you've been through some shit is what they're saying. It's been kind of a wild ride. Are you just about to hit a big birthday, like 40 or 50 or? In December, not a, well, it's big to me, but not a 59. I'll oh, so, so next year's, next year's the 60? Yeah, but that's a year. It's almost two years, though. It's a year and a half. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll say that. I don't, this isn't, you can't validate this, but from now until 60, um, when, when you sit there on your 60th birthday, you're going to be like, wow. Like a lot of, a lot has changed and, I, and a lot can change in two years, you know, 20 months, but you're going to, it's got a whole different arena and it's good. So the, so the, the good's coming. All right. Um, the light is shining. I do get scripture again. I try not to, you know, I know that the, the, the thing behind this group is, you know, whatever religion everyone's open and I'm open. It doesn't matter whether you're Buddhist, Hindu, atheist, agnostic, Christian, whatever. I, I I'm Christian, but I don't say other people have to be, but I come from a Christian background but the Bible just keeps coming up. So I don't know if you're starting to learn more about it or you're getting into it, or I would even say the fact that maybe you are like, like me, I was raised Catholic and I, and then I was saved. And then I had this like bitterness towards the church for a while when I started like understanding all this stuff. And now I just accept everything. So like, you know, you, when you find Christ or find love or find your soul in yourself, you become more open and willing to accept others but some of us will revert back to some form of religion or foundation that's very similar to what we decide we want to believe in and not what other people are going to tell us and believe in. And I think you're getting there. That's exactly you're, there. Okay. Oh, good. Good. Um, so, you, you know, I'll read, I'll, I, don't, I don't read a lot, but, you know, if it's the Bhagavad Gita or the, the Quran or the Bible or any of the ancient Hebrew, I'll read anything. Yeah. If you want to learn to write, but yeah, the, I want to learn. And I think the more we become open to other things, other religions, other cultures, um, the better off we'll be. And I think you're like, you're on that track. As far as the stuck thing, um, it feels like multiple things. Are you stuck in career and relationship or, and, or like where you are, like in your house? It's just a weird Probably in my grief. And you're, oh, and you're, oh, really? It's in your grief? Yeah, I think. But I'm working on it. I mean, I think you're doing amazing. Um, did you move a lot? or Because the same thing is coming through for the previous person. Did you move a lot? Or is there a pinball machine? I can see the pinball machine. A jukebox. Mm, nope, sorry. Pinball um, machine. That's okay. No no worries. Did you move a lot when, you, when, the kid, when your son was little? We had a major move when him and my, my husband and I split up. Okay, I'm I'm stop after, yeah. I want to stop you. I want you to drop the guilt because it's not your fault. It's the same thing as the previous person. And this doesn't happen all the time, but there was nothing that could have been duff, done different to save the marriage. It couldn't have been done different to pick a different house or to do this. It was all part of like something that just had to happen. So if there's any regret or, or feeling of like, oh, I wish I didn't have to do this to my kids. I firmly believe that as souls, everything that happens in our current lifetime is something that we agreed to. And I think that when your soul's, when your son's soul decided to incarnate as your son, 
and then again, this is even before you were born. I mean, you know, it's just, there's no time. And you say, okay, in this lifetime, I mean, we're going to get, we're probably going to get divorced. There's probabilities, there's no guarantees, or else we'll just be robots, right? We have free will. Nanu, nanu, just kidding. Um, but um, it wasn't your fault. There was something that just needed to play out. Um, I don't know. I, I remember watching Mork and Mindy, but I don't remember what it's about. But something of that has to relate to your son and his life. I don't know how. I don't know if he liked Robin Williams or like, you know, it's more than just I watched the show. Maybe his name was Mork. I don't know. But there's, and I don't know what the show was about. Wasn't he like an alien or something? That, yeah. Okay. Did your son like aliens? Not so much. He liked E.T. a lot though. Oh, so there's the E.T. again. Okay. Which was an alien. Okay. Um, was he really interested in other possibilities, other um you know life and did, did he ask inquisitive questions or like it's almost I like be where it's coming from it almost feels like i wanted to know more and i was very interested in and i kind of feel like you took that over especially since he's passed and you become more exploratory and more open-minded and more inquisitive and more loving as a result um but make sure you take the blame or the guilt off of any of the situation that's not only leading to divorce but all that led to the divorce but also the move who's the big beer drinker like i got lots of cans sitting around my husband of 17 years transition in march of five years ago he had been sober for a long time that might be who you're thinking of and it's who's the our, and who's our like richard or raymond again Ryan, Ricky. Randy's the only person I can think of. And he's living. And who is that? Randy. Remember we talked about Randy? No, because when I'm in and these he's things. living. You mentioned a Randy. Or yeah, I, when I'm doing these things, I, I, I like in a whole other world. Who's Randy? My friend with the light around him. Oh, okay. Did he know your ex-husband? The one that passed my the 17 year guy with the, the, the drinker yeah i would almost say to you that um is that totally right how do you connect with the month of february my son joey transitioned in february oh well then it's okay. i have two sons in spirit I'm sorry. The feeling is the R. Okay, so there's multiple R's. It's not just Randy. There's another R, like a Robert or something. Part of the message is to thank Randy for stepping up for you. But the other part is the person that was the drinker, that was just something that... Now, but you said he stopped, though. Yeah, he was sober when I met him. But Did he relapsed on other things later that destroyed the liver itself. and stuff like that. Okay. There's another forgiveness opportunity, a lot of forgiveness, sorry, opportunity there. Not just with that relationship and things that happen, but also a lot of layers of forgiveness. Like even to where I think you even take some of the blame for letting him relapse or getting back into it or something like that. Or maybe you could have prevented it. There's a lot of like layers of like, just forgive yourself because that soul, this soul with a, the drinking one is a very, it's kind of, he's kind of a young, not, I don't want to say younger soul, but this challenge of substance and finding things in life that supplemented just to got him to a different type of like, not high, but I would even say jumping off a, of, you know, that type of thing was a thrill seeking kind of person was something he just needed to experience. And you just kind of happened to be in, in spirit form. I could almost see you guys like planning it. Like, Hey, I'm going to go along for this ride. I'm going to be, I'm going to be part of it. And it's going to be tough, but it's going to be fun too. And it's going to keep me on my toes. Do you understand this? Yeah. So there's just kind of an acceptance of understanding that this whole path and plan was part of what was supposed to happen. Um, and you and you did a great job because I think there was some, I don't know if he swore a lot, but I wanted to swear and when I don't usually swear, but there were some really wild fun times is what it feels like to me. Even if it wasn't around alcohol, I feel like there was some just good fun times. Vacation or like, hey, we did this. Very or, good time. I'm, I'm going to honor you um, 
this man is making me feel like you guys had some fun times. If you, if you picking up my gist, like that part of your relationship was like pretty good. Is that his personality and is that also accurate? If you don't mind yeah. saying in front of 160 people. Yeah. It's yeah. like, he's like that part of a relationship, not a miss. <laughs> Did you understand that? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm getting the song Uptown Girl by Billy Joel. So I don't know if that's like, you like Billy Joel or that was one of your songs or I don't I know. I do like Billy Joel. The feeling behind that is like, I don't know if he, and again, don't, I don't know what the feeling is. I don't know if he left you money or like you feel guilty doing things, but it's almost like a feeling of like, just go do it, live it up, have your fun. We're all here. The sun's sorry. I wanted them more to come through, but you know, usually um, oh, I'll talk about that in a second. Cause you said you had a session with me, but there's more like drop even more guilt about if you go to a concert, a Billy Joel concert and have fun, have fun. Like we're all here. We're, you know, think about what the other person's son said about being in, you know, they all talk about that all the time. When we transition and leave the body, it's like, oh, what a run, you know, and then we get to relax and go home and, you know, whatever we got to do. But um, just enjoy yourself while you're here because you got a lot of nurturing to do still, you know, even at 58, like you said, you were, whatever you are, you look 40 to me. But um, you, got a lot, you got a lot of nurturing to do. Um, a lot more foster kids. That's not ending soon. So just keep up the good work. Don't worry about the guy with the whole thing. Uh, it's definitely going to play out the way it needs to, but don't feel bad because it's just something he needs to go through. Um, and before you go, if you don't mind, just because I'm inquisitive, when you had a session with me, did one or both of your sons come through in our private session? Yeah. Oh, good. So I'm glad that that happened only because other people and other messages came through just because that you know that's what you needed. How long ago was your session with me? It's been a year, probably. Okay. Well, I'm glad and I'm hoping that this helped you heal tonight. And um, it was seven months after my son passed. And he came through? Yeah. So I had the session with you. Do you hang the magnets on the fridge still or have a lot of magnets on the fridge? That was my, my husband. Oh, he was the one with the magnets, the the, the beer guy. Mm -hmm. I took them all down. Got it. So there's a there's a blessing to you of just. Oh, I will say that. That's an interesting thing, but I'll say it. There is a minuscule part of you that kind of enjoys being. I don't. I don't. I'm not saying you're by yourself, but there's part of you where there's certain times where you're okay being a little bit of a loner and like, that's okay because you get to your, so you must have, I don't know what, what, what sign that is. Maybe it's a Sagittarius. I'm not sure. That's me. But, okay. So you're, you're to where you're like, Hey, I kind of want to just do me. And it's not selfish. It's just like, I kind of like just being myself and doing my thing. So I'm going to take these, even though I miss the shit out of them, I want to take these magnets down or even though this. And so that's okay. This is you to enjoy that type of life because you deserve it. And I think you gave and did everything you needed to do from the perspective of a daughter, a wife, and a, and a mother. And even to the ones that are you're nurturing now or in fostering now. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for, for coming on. I hope this helped you. Thank you so much, Daniel. That was wonderful. And um, I was wondering if you had a few last words to say. We, we actually have people asking how to get a reading from you and it's seems like you're booked out until the end of 2022. Uh, do you have any classes that are coming up that you're teaching or anything else that maybe people can connect with you through? Yeah, so I, I, I really, I hope this is okay, but I, I really recommend a woman named Pam Sears. Um, there's a, a, I think she's even on here. Kimberly Carlton has just, she's, I've watched her grow. It's amazing. And there's a woman named Jennifer Fence. I will tell you guys, I, I just had a graduating class of like eight people. And they're all going to be launching their website and taking, getting certified through Find a Certified Media with Mark. Um, and once they do, they're going to be on my website and they're, they're going to be, you can pick from them and they're going to be, I'm going to send a link to their website. And I, you know, between my three kids and my full-time job, and I'm working on a ton of projects, writing my second book, I, I'm booked into like September. Um, so, but, but I do go live on Mondays on, um, on Facebook and or Instagram or TikTok. I do have my book here. It's called Why Are We Here? It's available on Amazon. 
Um, and between reaching out to one of my students or one of those people on Monday nights, hopefully we can keep in touch. I try to post things on Facebook and Instagram that are inspirational and loving. And uh, but right now I'm I'm just I'm so booked. I I just I, I you know, and I'm even booked even further than I want to be just with appointments. So. Um, well, it just shows how much people love you. And thank you so much for doing this tonight. We truly appreciate it. And um, I'll be sure to put your website address on the YouTube video. And um, we'll definitely hope to have you back sometime really soon. And we always ask everyone to unmute at the end and to say thank you and good night. So um, if you all would like to do that with Daniel John, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been great. Thank you. 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 Thank